Hey guys, welcome back to the Schmodown Respin presented by Cinetopical. I am Nate, and here's the rundown for today's show. In this week's news, Robert Barker versus Chance Ellison will be live exclusively on the Skybound Expo, which you can find on the Skybound YouTube page. The Schmodown Throwdown will be split between July 31st and August 7th, the first date featuring Roka versus Irwin for the number one contenders match for singles, as well as final exam versus deep three as the undercard. The August 7th date will be Smets versus Don Dapani for the Inner Geekdom Championship. And then the winner of the final exam versus Deep 3 from the first date versus... There's 13, Pride. Scrub. Fuck. The undercard will be the Pride versus either final exam or Deep 13. Kim Natsak was voted by his faction as the new manager of the Burning Droogs despite his hesitancy to take the role and also much to Brandon Hanna's dismay, but more on that later. And now we have the lineup for this year's singles tournament. No major surprises in the lineup for the singles tournament. However, there would be a lot of fresh faces all eager for their opportunity to show what they can do in the movie trivia showdown. The only thing of any real consequence is this Irwin Roca Merle situation. Now, if Ethan Irwin is not the champion by the time the singles tournament begins, he will be competing in the tournament for his faction. However, if Irwin is the champion, therefore obviously unable to compete in the tournament, then Jen Kemp will be competing for the usual suspects in that fourth spot. And as far as the Finstock exchange goes, if Irwin does end up being the champion, then Roca and Merle will both be representing the exchange in the tournament. However, if one of them is the champion, then Sabrina Ramirez will take the spot for the person who obviously is ineligible to compete in the tournament. So if that is the case, it will be exciting to finally see Sabrina in action. Obviously, we've heard a lot about how good she can or can't be. Looking at some other factions lineups here, the Quirky Mercs are coming in strong with a great lineup. William Bibiani, Brendan Meyer, Perry Nimroff making her return to the Movie Trivia Showdown, and Tim Franco. Swag also coming in with a great lineup. Paul Oyama, Liz Shannon Miller, Lon Harris, and Frank Moran. You know, between the, the Finstock Exchange, Swag, and the Quirky Mercs, surprisingly, I mean, they all have the highest chances of winning this tournament, it's having the highest number of great players in their lineup. However, it is a singles tournament, so any player on any given day can come and show up and do their thing and take it home for their faction, but those are the three that tend to stand out the most. But on to this week's matches. First up, we have Brandon Hanna representing the Burning Droogs versus Damon representing the Rockstars. Hanna, upset about this choice is Ken Knapsack as the new manager of the Burning Droogs at the beginning of the match basically tells Ken to F off, says he doesn't want him there and he's gonna manage himself for the match. Ken, obviously not really wanted to be there himself, obliges and lets him go ahead. In round one, Hannah challenges whether or not The Green Hornet is actually a inner geekdom film, which is honestly one of the dumbest challenges that I think we've ever seen in the Schmodown. Mark Ellis even reminding him after the challenge was already overruled that The Green Hornet was clearly put on the list of films given to inner geekdom players before the season started. He should have known that this film was going to be on there whether or not he's just doing it to continue being a little prick. Only he knows. He ends up hitting Spinner's Choice, goes perfect in round two, all two-point questions. Damon, in his round two, also goes perfect, all gets his all of his two-pointers. So it's tie game going in round three, and it comes down to Hannah's five-point question. He has to burn all three of his repeats on it, and guess what? He still loses, which, personally, we here at Cinetopical are very excited about. We are tired of hearing this kid's mouth. He's an absolute jerk. And I am thrilled that we do not have to see him anymore throughout this tournament. I'm sure he will pop up to run his mouth here and there, but very, very excited to not have to watch him in any more matches and treat his manager and the rest of his faction like crap. But, you know, let's talk a little bit more about that because we are very, very excited to announce that we have an exclusive interview coming to you right now with the new manager of the Burning Droogs himself, Ken Knapsack. Ken, welcome to the show. We're so honored to have you here today. How are you doing? Well, you're bothering me on my day off, but other than that, I guess uh, I guess I'm fine. So, Ken, obviously the big news surrounding you right now is your recent election as the new manager for the Burning Droogs. Something you don't seem too excited about. What's the worst thing about being a manager? Oh, is this about the Schmodown? I thought this was a podcast about the 86 Mets. Ken, it's called the Schmodown Respin. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, wait a sec. Am I getting paid for this? 
Christian said I should get paid since I'm a manager now. Well, Ken, we're going to pay you as much as we paid Kaiser and all of our other guests. Just have your people call our people. You know, we'll get it straight now. But moving on, why don't you tell us a little bit about what happened between you and Brandon Hanna during this week's match? Well, uh, let me tell you something about that kid. He's a brat. He reminds me of Sedacious B. Crumb. He looks funny, he smells funny, and he annoys the shit out of me. If I had to choose between managing him and managing Christian Harloff in the prime of his god-awful stand-up career, I would still probably pick Brandon Hanna. Regardless, I'm not sure how long he'll be an issue. Um, what exactly do you mean by that? Are you hiring a hitman for the hitman? I'm not saying my lady friend Grace Hancock has a chalk-drawn five-point star surrounded by candles in the backyard with Brandon Hanna's picture in it, but, uh, maybe we do. Okay, well, Ken, out of the four players you have representing your faction in the singles tournament, who do you think has the best chance of winning? Oh, did I uh, mention I'm the author of Why We Love Star Wars by Ken Knapsack, which is available everywhere on Amazon Prime? Seriously, why can't anyone just answer the questions about the Schmodown? Well, uh, I gotta go. I got a Zoom meeting with Josh McCuga. We're gonna open up some classic baseball card packs. Thank you so much, Ken, for another exciting Schmodown Respin interview. Up next, we have John Humphrey representing the Quirky Mercs versus the Barbarian representing the Finstock Exchange. Barbarian 8 4 lead going into round two. He hits all of his multiple choice questions, or he hits all of his round two questions, but does have to check to multiple choice quite a bit. Humphrey does okay, but the Barbarian extends his lead by a point going into round three. And from there on, Humphrey struggles, can't hit a single round three question. So the Barbarian takes it with the TKO. But I have to say, I love the Barbarian. He has obviously shown that he is very good at inner geekdom. He's shown that he's very good uh, in regular movie trivia as well. I think he has a bright future in the Schmodown. But as far as inner geekdom goes, it seems like every match of his that we watch he tends to check to multiple choice quite a bit and that has me slightly worried for him when he gets to the upper tier players of the inner geekdom your robert parker your smets your kalinowski your chandrew i don't think that he's going to be able to take this tournament going to multiple choice as much as he does so hopefully you know he can get some more confidence in his movie knowledge it felt like he knew a lot of those answers that he checked to multiple choice too he was just worried about saying them wrong or a little iffy on it but Hopefully, he can get it together and start hitting a lot more two-pointers and be a legitimate contender for the Inner Geekdom belt. Next up, we have the final of the Star Wars tournament, the five-rounder between Demolanta, representing the Finstock Exchange, and Ace, the Cinderella story of the Star Wars tournament, representing swag it is a great game it comes all the way down to the final we get to see the new uh internet version of the speed round match personally i enjoyed it a lot you know the old speed round match it helped out a lot of players who were just really quick on the buzzer you know both players could have easily possibly known it we saw this with uh sam levine quite a bit clark wolf also very good in the speed round sometimes it's not always about who knows it but who knows it and who can get to the buzzer first so with the new speed round it gives both players a chance to earn a good many points for themselves or you know in teams eventually for their faction if they end up keeping this when we go to studio and start doing teams again uh, personally i would like to see uh this continue as the way the speed round works you know uh, a it offers a lot less potential technical problems i know they got things with the buzzer down pretty well uh i can't it's been, feel like it's been a long time since we really had an issue with that but the fact that it kind of evens the playing field even more uh, i really really enjoy that and it added a whole extra level of suspense to the match because they did not reveal what questions the players got right until they both had completely finished their speed round and then they revealed to everyone exactly how many points each player got and that to me just adds like i said another level of suspense adds more tension a new level of excitement to the match and i thoroughly enjoyed it this match went down to the last question of round five demolanta seemed to be in control the entire match he never lost his lead once he built it he had the perfect round one and got the bonus question but in round five he cannot pull his last question and ace 
completes, at least for the tourney, his Cinderella run. Now, we'll see how that goes when he gets his shot against Damon. Demolanta, obviously upset, very, very frustrated with himself after the match. And understandably so, these Star Wars, you know, everyone in the Schmodown works so hard, but these Star Wars players, the nuances of the films that they have to learn, these just individual minor character names, parts and tools that are used to fix ships that they have to learn, Demolanta upset, but Christian delivers him some good news. He, due to the fact that he has two wins against competitors that have wins in the Star Wars division, will ultimately automatically get a title shot. He is essentially the new number one contender, saying that if Ace faces Damon, sorry, and loses, and Damon remains the champion, then Demolanta will automatically get his title shot against Damon himself. Now, if Damon does lose to Ace, then Damon will automatically get his rematch first, and then Demolanta will get his title shot after that. So, some good news to the runner-up of the Star Wars tourney. He will get his shot eventually, no matter what it is. Personally, I am so excited for any of those Star Wars matches to come. These matches deliver hard. They are always so tight, so close, so good. We get some insane challenges coming in that you just never know which way they're going to make a decision on. So I'm thrilled about that, as I'm sure you all are as well. Thanks so much for watching this episode of the Schmodown Respin. Remember always, like, comment, share, and subscribe.